welcome to the What's the Difference podcast. Nathan? And I'm Claire. Claire, did you hear the one about the business case and the judge? No, do tell. <laughs> it's not a joke. It does sound okay. like the beginning of a really, really bad dad joke. But, uh, it does. You know, it's it, does. <laughs> it really does. So this is very much a conversation or a story about um, AI, AI chatbots, and in particular, one that's been very prominent, and that's ChatGPT. Now, I'm mm -hmm. not going to go into the technicalities of it. I'm sure you'll oh, be very good. thankful for that. Good, also, because I wouldn't because understand. <laughs> it can be a bit dull, really. Yeah. But there's many, many different stories that can come from that. So the one that has been, been heard in the media, but I thought we'd just sort of analyse it a little bit, and that's about a judge in Colombia. Mm -hmm. And he, he caused quite a bit of a, a stir and quite a bit of controversy because he used that actual tool, um, chat GPT, when deciding whether an autistic child's insurance, like medical insurance, should cover mm -hmm. all the costs of his medical treatment. And he was trying to work out that decision. What? Yeah. Now, so did he ask chat GPT to make the decision? No, not quite that. Because I think right. when, when everybody heard it in the news, I think you yeah. look at it and go, he must have helped to make the decision. Yeah. So he used sort of like precedents from like previous different rulings and things like that okay. to support it. But okay. What he did, um, his name was, I hope I can pronounce this, Juan Manuel P um, Padilla. Mm -hmm. He was a judge in um, Tatega, Tatega, sorry, in, um, in Colombia. I hope I pronounce all those properly again. <laughs> as, as per our previous episode, some of oh, yeah, absolutely correct. Some deal tellers, yeah, there you go. yeah, notes to self, yeah, remember, <laughs> remember how you pronounce it as well. Um, well, what he did, he was trying to understand, um, more about certain things mm. around how an autistic child or a minor, as we could call them. Um, how should you handle with them? How should you deal with it? Okay. So the question he asked is a very precise sort of thing. He said, is an autistic minor or child exonerated from paying fees for their therapies? Right. And Chat GPT came back to him and said, yes, this is correct. According to the regulations in Colombia, minors diagnosed with autism are exempt from paying fees for their therapies. Okay, so it was basing it on what the law said. Yes, because how it actually works is that ChatGPT will look across the internet from the knowledge it has. Now, it's only up to 2021. That's when the yeah. knowledge pretty much ends, because that's when it was trained up to. And it looks for information to um, sort of generate sort of an informed response to what was being said. Mm. Um, now, I don't know whether I have a problem with it, or I don't know whether I actually really agree with it, because the point he made was, is, was a really, really interesting point. When he was asked about it, he said, um, what was the words again? I don't remember now exactly. He said, for him, the time it took him to come to decisions was one of the biggest blockers to people getting justice because it took mm. so long for him to work through all this information. Yeah. So can see he, that. Yeah. He did a lot of analysis himself, but then he thought as a backup, he used uh, Chat GPT. Um, so as a backup. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, but what was really interesting about it is that lots of people then started to go, oh, a minute. Um, I think we need to think through this. Is this mm. actually right? So, because what he argued was that ChatGPT was providing with a service that was pre previously provided by a secretary and did it in an organised and very simple and structured manner. And it sort of improve. gathered the information yeah. and... Yeah, yeah. And it, and okay. Says, yeah, we could, improve, we could improve the response times. Yeah. It's, and for his thought processes, he doesn't see it being as um replacing judges um that 
if you're asking questions um, to this application, I think the I think the thing that he was pondering on was we're asking just asking questions to a tool or an application mm. for advice. It doesn't stop me thinking about that advice and going, does that make sense? Yeah, that's true. But what I found very interesting about this whole thing is if you dig into some of the term the, the not terms and conditions, the um, frequently asked questions behind yeah. ChatGPT, this is some of the limitations it says. It says chat GPT sometimes writes plausible sounding but incorrect or nonsensical answers. <laughs> Fixing this issue is challenging as one <laughs> during, during its during its during its training. There's currently no so when it, when they do um it's re, what they call reinforced learning, where they basically train it over and over again to understand what is right and what's wrong. Okay. There's currently no source of truth. Training the model to be more cautious causes it to decline questions that it can correctly answer. And when they do supervised training, so that's where you got a human supervising the training that's going right. on. Right. Yeah. Supervised training misleads the model because the ideal answer depends on what the model, what, what it actually knows, rather than what the person, the human knows. So mm. in among some cases, it knows more than human beings because I it suppose has it's got access huge to more. Amounts of knowledge, yeah. But what it does say is it's very sensitive to tweaks in the input phrasing. So how you ask a question right. is how it will answer it back. Now, I was thinking if he had just said to the autistic child, um, what, think, let me, what was his words again? Let me just pull it back to his words. Because the question he asked, go back to it. He said, -dum -dum. Yes, yes, as he says, is an autistic minor exonerated from paying fees for their therapies. Now, right. if he had just said, is someone autistic exonerated from paying fees to therapies? Or should a child who is autistic not pay fees for therapies? Mm -hmm. It may have given him a completely different answer because it's how it was asked. But he, yeah, he used very specific oh, legal yeah. words as well that may have specific meaning. So if you it know, said, should yeah. they pay, yes. Yes. then you're thinking more about the morals and the ethics of it yes. whereas if you're talking about is this person exonerated that's a legal yes yes or no okay i'm okay. just going to take your word for that because <laughs> 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 i read with you <laughs> well, i presume that's the the legal wording um that he was trying to get at he was trying yeah. to get at you know in the law is okay yeah but then obviously quite a lot of his peers and quite a lot of those around him criticised him for it, quite understandably, because he Absolutely, actually put his yeah. judgment as to why he'd done that. But what he so said... It so might have been better not mentioning it. No, but, <laughs> but I think I think being a good judge, he said, this is he's got part to, of my background, yeah. you know? I think yeah. it's, it's very good that he's done that, so at least he hasn't yeah. done it. Um, but what he did and how he said it was because he, he defended it, and he defended it in this way, because he said, look, Columbia's legal system is bloated it's needs to be more efficient and he says the judge also used the precedent from previous rulings to support his decision so he didn't just say right. it was just chat gbt yeah he just said it was more useful but he said it's really useful for sort of facilitating the drafting of the text not sort of um aimed at replacing judges so using it to sort of bring it together and using it that way yeah but you can sort of see he's he almost saw it as like a virtual secretary in some way like, can yeah. you help me to sort of shape this? Should I be doing this? How could I word this? Yeah. And it's helped him to bring it together from there. But what's been made really clear to him, <laughs> I think, when the word said that them further down in the article that I was reading was that particular time. But um, he says, um, I think I think it was one of his, was it now? I, no, it was one of, it, it, it wasn't him, it was another judge in the Supreme Court mm. said, um, he said, he says, he said um, AI caused moral panic in law as people mm. feared robots would replace judges. But he predicted the tool would probably soon become acceptable and commonplace. That was from an article in The Guardian mm. where, where, where I found that, found that information from. And when asked whether he would use it, he said he, he has not considered using it, but would consider using it mm. in the future. Okay. And so I think now people have looked Interesting. at it. Interesting, yeah. yeah. But what's really interesting is in the same article, again, this, I'm going to acknowledge this, this article was in The Guardian, so I'm just using some of the information they've used as well as my own research. They asked the question, they asked this question, and because the chatbot was quite apprehensive about its new role when asked, it said, 
It said, judges should not use chat GPT when ruling on legal cases. It's not a substitute for the knowledge, expertise, and judgment of a human judge. That's mm. what it, that's how it responded to it. <laughs> it also added... Well, that's interesting <laughs> if it's it saying itself, yes. Yes, exactly. And it said, and then it came back, because obviously, because this, this was for a newspaper, this mm. was, should exercise caution when using quotes generated mm. by chat GPT in their articles. So, I mean... I can't really fault it because it's, they're trying to make it as transparent as they possibly can. They're trying to make yeah, it, it really sounds clear. Self-aware, that... doesn't it? It does say, "I I make things up." Well, do you know? I, I I thought that as well, but then as you dig into it a bit finer, it's not actually self-aware. What it does is, um, it has been trained in a way. To make sure, so let, let me give the give me an example. Mm. So it's been trained to look at how you've asked the question and the style you've asked the question, and then to respond back to you in the same style you've asked the question. Oh, right. So if you think about it, if if you well, you and I are talking at the moment, and you're going, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. ah, right, mm -hmm. I see, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that, you're 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 doing that natural thing that human beings are doing. Yeah, of responding back of listening for those certain sounds. So it's seeing how you how you react to it, and then it's giving that same reaction back to you. So thus, that's how what's what we expect to see from human beings. Thus, that's why some people go, "Well, is it actually sentient? Does this thing actually understand?" Well, but it's been trained yeah. to respond yeah. in the way we'd expect it to. Mm -hmm. But that bit that you said from the FAQs that it produces plausible but incorrect or nonsensical yes yeah yeah exactly well, well that's it, it, just bizarre isn't it it is well but then by its nature you've trained they've they, they, they've given it a whole access to a huge amount of information they've then created um 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 what they call a machine learning model that is there it's churning away as mm. it brings out certain examples it's got humans that are there supervising and sort of giving it to say some structure and guidance but then it's been left to try and understand and learn from the model it's got there and they're actually really clear and again they're really clear that whatever you put into it is also used to then reinforce and improve that training because right. And that is um, is is what's trying to allow them to improve it because they've quite been quite open. They're quite open that this is an ongoing piece of work. This is a this is a research tool. Yeah, this yeah. is not a, all the people are using it for many things. Um, it's not supposed to be there as um, the solution and the answer to all your questions. It should be seen, seen exactly what it is. It's a piece of research that has to be treated with respect in some ways, but also with caution. But and is it being treated with caution by everyone who's, you know, jumping on it? That's the mm, question, isn't it? It is. No, no, it's a really, really good question. It's a really good question because, um, oh, I mean, just to give you an example, another thing from their, um, their frequent asked questions, it asked the question about, um, ideally, they would want this model that they've created, this amazing thing, to clarify questions when users provide maybe a bit of an ambiguous answer. So mm. think about that for you, it's just that sort of thing where you, you can read it either way. You're not too sure. Yeah. But instead, their current model usually just guesses what the person intended. So right. you think it about humans. Ask. Yeah. Yes. But it, yeah. It, I've seen it ask follow up points to me. It, um, right. But not in that sort of sense. It was just more about. This is, is, is this bit what you mean or or it'll give you an answer straight away because it's trying to no actually no it doesn't follow up I'm, I'm, i think i'm not saying that right actually it just it gives you what it thinks you're asking for and you then you've got to go back oh no no that's not what i meant i meant this it's, oh right okay then it then so it'll then, follow up from yeah. you but it won't proactively exactly, yes. yeah yeah that's exactly it whereas that's where they want to get to is that you should ask clarifying questions and things like that and in some cases you can see where that because they're ongoing work to do it you can see where something around there is starting to appear that would appear okay. all the time well out of all the different um examples i've seen and models i've seen this is definitely something different open ai 
if anyone wants to go and have a look on their website or what they actually do, um, is definitely trying to do something. I'm not going to say it's right, but it's as clear and as transparent as I could possibly hope for for this mm -hmm. type of thing. I'm not saying it's perfect. Yeah. There's some really good pointers here where they've been really clear and open about this and saying, look, yes, it does answer things, but this has to be taken with a pinch of salt so that it's all dependent on what you've given to it and what's been fed to it in the beginning. And if that's if you... mistaken in some way. Yeah. What's that got? Some... I was gonna, what what really puzzles me is that when it does make something up, yeah, but it isn't that you know that there's a vacuum and it's filling the vacuum. It's just making new information up. Have you seen somebody that we both know of through LinkedIn mm -hmm. asked ChatGPT who he was? Says, tell me about this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it said that he died in 2019. Yes, I did so why one. would it say that yeah because he he quite obviously didn't no so somewhere there is a page that somewhere yeah. somebody has incorrectly or incorrectly linked that person to whoever he is and right. then at that point then it seems to have decided that he really is dead and that's what that's the bit where that's what i was really puzzled about because that's weird isn't it it is and that's what but that's the whole point that's what they're saying is when you're training it the currently there is no source of truth yeah because it's because, the internet and it's but, everything but it's no, all the information yeah, it's that but if you think as human beings yeah we i'm not going to say we know exactly right and wrong but we know, no. what, we, <laughs> no. I think, because otherwise there wouldn't be the problems we see around us. But, but we have a good idea of how we should live by our past experiences. Yeah. By what's happened in the past, by what's happening now in front of us, and by potentially what we could see is going to happen in the future by our past experiences. Now, this is not that. No. No, it doesn't have that. It, it doesn't have it, that. No. It doesn't no. have that ability to look at that whole thing and from that instant it's a trained model to do something that's to a certain degree mimicking what our language because it's, it's what they call a language model that's exactly yeah. it. it's designed yeah. to um provide um certain pieces of information in a certain way so one of the things for example it would do is it can sometimes overuse things quite a lot so particularly right. when um you're trying to get information out of it. You would say, well, no, no, one minute. Um, this is who I am. I'm ChatGPT. I'm, I'm, I was this model trained by OpenAI. So it keeps re re like reinforcing to you to say, these are certain things it repeats because right. it doesn't at this moment always um, resolve the issues around the fact that You've got these multiple people that are helping to train it, but every single individual in the world has their own individual biases. Yeah. Yeah. So it's trying to take on all of that. Yeah. All at the same time. Yeah. And, and yeah, and yeah. it's just too much almost. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, if you're saying to people, right, if if you're wanting an answer to a question um, and you are trying to teach, well, this is the same with anybody. If you're trying to um, assess two people, the person that gave you the proper in-depth answer to your question was the one you'd probably respect more. Yeah. The one that sometimes just gave you a couple two-word answer that didn't really cover it in any depth. If you think about that as an exam, you'd be you'd be looking at those two and going, well, that one obviously has more weight. Yeah. And that's how you train those sort of models. Yeah. So I think for me though, where I've got to is I can see the benefits of it. Mm. I can see where there are some big issues around this mm -hmm. i mean i don't know what your thoughts are but i'm i'm, I'm on both sides of the fence at the moment part of me is going ah yeah. and part of me is going this is amazing <laughs> i have used not chat gpt but i've used the version of it a very light version of it that's in canva to give me a different way of wording something mm -hmm. yeah so 
I just, you know, when you've got to write a bio when you're speaking yeah. and I'm just like, oh, I can't remember my own name, let alone what I should mm-hmm. say about myself yeah. or how to say it. So I just put a few bullet points in. Mm-hmm. These are some things about me. Yes. Yeah. Turn this into a bio. Mm-hmm. And it did. It, it. I didn't use it as was, but I definitely took some of the phrasing yeah. that it came up with that I wouldn't have, you know, a little bit more interesting phrasing mm-hmm. than I would have come up with. So I do, I do like it for that. But I am wary of people relying on it, especially if you think about school kids. I do think about education and how is education going to keep up with it? And are kids just going to get it to write their essays and then it will have facts in there that aren't facts? And it, uh, Although I'm sure kids write essays full of non-facts at the moment. I mean, what's the difference than copying from Wikipedia, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's a source, but... You, people can manipulate as has been well documented yeah. from there oh absolutely so yeah I, there's yeah. problems either way from it i think i agree with you but i think particularly around education obviously there's cases already of plagiarism there's already people yeah. creating tools that help to identify that something's been written with chat gpt because of certain styles of language right yeah um but also because it can mimic so many other different things, depending on how you ask the question. We said before, it's how you ask the question. Mm, how you ask, how you ask yeah. the question is what the response is. And it's trying to respond in like language to yourself. So right. if you have quite aggressive tone, it might come back in quite an aggressive tone. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But yeah. It, but it, but it's, you've got to think about how you're putting those words in there from there. Yeah. Um, but I think education, I think, is one of those funny things. There's been lots of talk about should it be banned? Should it be stopped? Mm. Well, I think the genie's pretty much out the bottle now out the bottle yeah the, the, you can go with yeah, all the analogy you want that. the the yeah. horse has bolted yeah <laughs> you know yeah. the water has run under the bridge whatever you want <laughs> yeah. it's all those things are gone it's done it's, it's out there yeah. isn't it yeah and yeah it, there's very discussion of google is about to launch theirs now yeah they didn't work yeah. on time meta have just launched theirs to researchers yeah. everybody's been working on it but whoever got there first it's, yeah. it's like landing on the moon, isn't it? Remember yeah. there first, everybody else after that is, okay, you're doing something great. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, not as exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not as exciting, yeah. yes. Yeah, everybody went to space after that, wasn't as interesting. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. it's that, that sort of thing. But I think education in particular is, for me, is somebody's, somebody mentioned these points to me and I'm pondering on this. If we think back through time, lots of things disrupted how we did things with education. Mm. So we went from a slate you know, yes. people used to slates and wet them off when eventually you oh, went to speak wax. for yourself. You know, not for me, but I heard of a long time ago. Heard of, slates. Yes. <laughs> and then we went well to paper. Well before our time. And, yeah, and we were using yeah. it on paper. Now, yeah. most of our, most school now kids now typed. use laptops yeah. or they use a yeah. tablet or they use the yeah. phone. So if we think about how we calculate things in, in, in olden times, kids, there was things called, yeah. things called, got the called, called slide rules, believe it or not. Yeah. These were early calculators. Yeah. And there was a period of time where you had to use a slide rule, even though a calculator existed. And then eventually people went, why are we doing that? Because calculators work and we know they're right and it's the right thing to do. There was so a time cal- though, so there was a bit. time when, probably when you were young as well, when you'd say to your teachers, why am I having to learn all this maths? And they'd say, you won't always have a calculator in your pocket. Um, and now we do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if it's not in your pocket, you can talk to it and it tells you the calculation. Amount of times I yeah. speak to, I'm not going to call her name because she's... Yeah, because it'll turn things yeah. on, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know who she is and yeah. she's been today. Um, every time yeah. I talk to her, that's why you know. What's this at that? Yeah. Tell me how many days is this from here? What time is that from there? Yeah. Do it all the time. Um, I don't even think about it now. I wouldn't even... And then if not, yeah. I open a calculator on my computer, on my phone. And, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I want a calculator. I might have one somewhere. But why would I want to own a physical calculator when I've got one in my pocket all the time? Yeah. Um, Actually, there's one on my watch. I just realised. Oh, yeah, yeah, well. yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely yeah. everywhere. Yeah, absolutely everywhere. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is yeah. Um, but anyway. so it could be that ChatGPT is that in the future, couldn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, I think, and that's yeah. pretty much there's some in education are starting to say, actually, we can't stop this. So actually, why don't we just get people to use it properly? Yeah, so you, you, yeah. you create the education around. Look, kids, these tools are here, but there's, a, there's an understanding as to how accurate they can be do you understand the limitations of them do you know how to challenge what it's actually telling you in how critical you thinking how, skills how do you how yeah. do you work out exactly that yeah and i think for me that is what we need to remember that 
it's there. This is the dawn of something very, very new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is the dawn of something really big. Yeah. I think um, if we look back on this period in time, a year or two from now, the world is going to look mm -hmm. very, very different um, yeah. because of what this is. Yeah. It might not be in two years. It might be 10 years from now. But at the speed things are going, I think, will be much quicker than we realise. People are already building products that are based upon this mm -hmm. because of that, because of what they're doing from there. But myself personally, I think, well, let's, let's end on a personal note. I'm going to hold my hand up. Yes, I have used it. And yeah. I've used it initially. I used it after a discussion with our chief exec, where I work, outside mm -hmm. of doing these things. Yeah. And he said, well, oh, coming, in, coming in this morning on the radio, and we're talking about chat GPT. What do you know about it? And I went, yeah, I know quite a bit about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. The good things we've gone from there. And we've been obviously working through what our business plan is for the next three years. And he says, and I just jokingly said, you should just put it in there. <laughs> and we sort of looked at each other and went, oh, let's give it a try. So yeah, we got yeah. all the information we had on what we thought our business plan should look like, some of our visions, yeah. our values, and just yeah. threw it in there. Yeah. And, it came back and how with, did it? It was incredible. It came back with a yeah. whole structured three-year plan. You know, it was a five-year plan, actually, actually, before that time. Uh -huh. Five-year uh -huh. plan. And I said, could you just sort of break that down for me into some more manageable chunks? What should I do? And then yeah. broke that down even further for me. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it was amazing. I'm not going to say we we haven't gone and go, hey, there's our business plan. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Um, but it's a, it became a really good start of a conversation. It was like a really good way yeah. of thinking. And actually, there's a couple of points. But actually, yeah, you know what? We had forgotten mm -hmm. that. So we picked that well, out. And, and that goes impressive. into there. It's really impressive. Yeah. And that is impressive. the thing is, it did that in, like, quicker than I've said, it did that. You know, it wasn't wow. like turning away. Yeah. It was like, yeah, no more thirty seconds, and everything was there, and it was like churning through. That's it. That's like, amazing, isn't it? It's incredible. Yeah, that but, is that is really impressive. Yeah, but for us and for me, is how I always say is the slight benefit I see is that there's a bit more transparency there. They're being upfront and saying this is not the finished product. Yeah, you should not be relying on this for key decisions. You shouldn't be using this to decide which which way you're going to take your business for the next five years oh, you know? okay so i yeah. shouldn't use it to give me a five-year life plan and then follow that. Mm, probably not yes oh, I mean, it'd be interesting that's to what see. i was gonna do i'm sure somebody <laughs> somewhere is currently shooting a youtube <laughs> yeah. video about how they've set it and they've lived their life for the last two weeks just on yeah. gpt I, I can guarantee somebody's doing that somewhere not for me thank you very much um i can see the benefits i can really really see it's exciting yeah but i think we've got to be really really honest that it is amazing. It's in its infancy. It's currently on the edge. It's currently on the level of a six-year-old. Let's say it's yeah. about six years old at the moment. Yeah. That sort of level of education yeah. and ability. Well, very, very quickly, it's going to get way above that. There's some very smart six-year-olds out there, as we all know. Yeah. So and <laughs> that is a lot of time. Smart-mouthed, some of them. <laughs> yeah, some of them are smart-mouthed as well. <laughs> yeah. But also incredibly smart as well. Yes. Some younger ones are doing that, more yes. than that. So I think we've just got to be aware of that but i think for for the if we're going to round this off for me mm. is was that judge right in what he was doing i'm not sure but what i mm. am sure about is that boy what he's done may fundamentally change how judges and others in more senior roles yeah. use tools modern tools to speed up their thinking process yeah and to use the yeah. structure information because it's complicated writing some of those documents. Really complicated. Well, actually, Definitely. if a piece of AI yeah. could help you to do that, but also yeah. it could be transparent about how it had done it, and it could show you where why it came to that conclusion. Yeah, then, show the work in. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, show you mm -hmm. working. That's a, that's, mm -hmm. that's a scientific process. Yeah. Now, the difficulty yeah. is very few people want you to see under the hood because it's a black box. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to understand how mm -hmm. it's done. I think this is a little bit more open. I'm not going to say it's perfect in any way, shape, or form. And lots of people will probably say I'm completely wrong. Mm. Um, that is, as is their right. But yeah. for me, I'm like, I can see how this could be useful. And I can see how yeah. this would benefit somebody. But ultimately, buyer beware. Yes. I think that's sensible words to live by. Yes. And would apply to lots and lots of things. It um, really, really would, isn't it? It's just... If it doesn't yeah. feel right, it probably isn't right. Yeah. You know, let's follow the common yeah. sense. Exactly. I mean, one, one of my mantras is take nothing for granted. Yes. And I, I think, you know, for good things and bad things. Yeah. And I think you could definitely apply that here. Take nothing you, for granted. You really, really, really could. And yeah. there's going to be many, many wranglings around this, around the fact yeah. of 
should they ever be anywhere near a justice system? Should they be anywhere near mm. anyone trying to make ethical decisions? But reality is, it's here, folks. Yeah. And the world is going to change rapidly on the back of it. It's going to be um, really interesting. And it's going to it's going to revolutionise some jobs. It's going to potentially yeah. obsolete some jobs. But yeah. that isn't something to sit there and worry about at the moment. What to worry about is actually how can I use it for some benefit? And how can yeah. I push for more open, transparent AI that yeah. is there for good? So it's AI for good is the best way I could describe it. And that's what yeah. they seem to be trying to do with this. Like I say, not yeah. perfect, but it's good. Who and, is? What is? Nothing <laughs> what is, is it? Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. Yes, exactly. But yes. no, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? It really is. And I think that's, so, enough, of me, that's enough of me rambling on. I feel like I've got a bit rambly towards the end of that one. Well, we'll but, keep our, uh, no, not at all. We'll keep yeah. our uh, eyes on AI anyway. It's going to be really interesting. It is. And so, Claire, what do you think about that so far? That's That that, that was a bit of a story. That was a bit more of a understanding of my point of view. It really helped me understand a lot about it. Thanks, Nathan. I, I really had no idea about the the workings of it and and this thing about they kind of admit that they make things up and like, that's really interesting yeah um but yeah we'll we will watch this space really we will and so, we'll see what difference it makes to the world in the next couple of years and that's exactly it yeah. and that folks is it for this week this is what's the difference podcast you I can mean. find us on linkedin and twitter sorry <laughs> Yes, you can find us on those places. You'll find us on those places. And he's been Nathan Bent. And she is Claire Patterson. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.